So today what we're going to be doing is showing you how to use one of these cheap wise cams and change it into an expensive IP camera. And a special thank you to all my patrons who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. Welcome to TechnoDad Life, where we simplify technology. And so we're going to be changing one of these wise cams into a cheap IP camera for our home surveillance system. So the first thing that you're going to need is a wise cam, and Amazon has two packs of them for very cheap. I'll leave links in the description for everything that I mentioned in this tutorial. Next, what we're going to need is a SD card or a micro SD card. And we want to limit the size to 32 gigabytes. So the WISE camera can't use more than 32 gigabytes as it's set up now. So basically, if you have something larger uh, that you want to use, you actually have to limit the space on it to 32 gigabytes in order for this to work. And I'll show you how to do that. And then finally, we want to Google WiseCam RTSP. This will give us the basic directions for how to do this. And I'm going to just do some, a few little tips so that it's easier than actually what the directions show here. So if we scroll down in the directions there, we go to the section where it says how to install the RTSP firmware. And then we need to download the file for our camera. So let's do that first. And while that's downloading, time for some coffee. Once that's done, show in folder. And then we're going to right click on that and unzip it to extract to demo right there in the folder. We're going to open up that folder and then we're going to rename this demo.bin. Now the next part that we need to do is get our SD card that we're going to be using and we're going to format it and then we're going to put the demo.bin file onto that SD card. Now if you're going to be reusing SD card, I really suggest I really suggest downloading the SD memory card formatter which you can find by just googling SD memory card formatter from the SD card association. It does a much better job at erasing the card than Windows does. Once that's installed, then now we want to insert our SD card into our computer and erase it. So here you can see our SD card showed up automatically. We're going to click Quick Format and then we're just going to format it. Then OK. Now you probably noticed that right here I have larger than 32 gigabytes. So I'll show you a little way that you can use a larger than 32 gigabyte card and it will still work. If you try to use a larger than 32 gigabyte card in any other way than what I show you, it will not work. So just do it this way. So close that and then right click on the start button. Go to disk management. And next we're going to delete that volume. And we're going to right click it again and then click New Simple Volume. Click Next. Now for volume size, we want to put something that's less than 32 gigabytes. So here we have a 128. So we're going to just change this to, we'll change this to 30. So it's just under 32. Click Next and Next. And what I find works better if this is FAT32 and then click Next and Finish. And so now we have our, our less than 32 gigabyte card. Now we want to open up our Downloads folder again where we got that demo bin. And we're going to just drag this into our new volume. And after we uh, install this in the card, it's going to install some other folders on this uh, SD card, but that's okay. Once the driver's installed, we can actually pull out this SD card and reuse it for something else. So then eject the new volume. And so pull that card out. And now comes the trickiest part. 
So, so on the bottom here, you can see there is a slot that this goes in right there. And the other thing that you'll notice is there is a button right there. And so we're going to be using those two things. So next we're going to insert the SD card. And so basically the SD card should be facing the front of the camera. So make sure that it is pressed down all the way so it doesn't stick up at all. And so next what we're going to do is press on this button while we're plugging in the cord in the back here. And then we're going to be watching this light right there. Okay, so for this part, put the cable in just enough so it doesn't turn on. And what I find works well to press this little switch here, because it's hard to press, is a regular USB cable. So pressing in the USB cable is the hardest thing here. So we're going to press on the switch and you'll hear a click. And then we press in our cable. Here you can see it's yellow and we have to hold it until it turns blue and then you can let go. So what will happen now is the light's going to turn on and off a few times. You'll hear clicking sound from the camera. You just have to wait three or four minutes for this process to uh, go through. Okay, so uh, once, once the driver's installed, go back to your WISE app, click on your camera, and then that will reconnect. It shouldn't have any problem reconnecting. And now we can see that it's working, and then click on the wheel up in the top right corner. Click on Advanced Settings, go all the way to the bottom, click on RTSP. And so now from RTSP, we can actually get an IP address if we click over on the right hand side on the circle. And here it says create a username and password for accessing the RTPS camera. And do not, do not use your WISE account for this. So this is a separate uh, one for the camera. And so now we have an IP address with our username and password. And then we're going to click copy. And so now we can use this URL in any video streaming software uh, to view our live stream. So what we're going to do now is go to VLC. And at the bottom click on network. And then click open network. And so at the top here, we're going to click on it where it says my server and paste in that URL and then click open network stream. Now, if you see at the bottom, it shows it. We we'll double click that and automatically it shows our uh, stream live there. And if I had the sound on, you could hear my voice echoing too as we're going along here. So the next thing that we're going to do in the next few weeks is show you how to set up a server where you can use these cheap cams to actually uh, monitor your property or your business, whatever you like. So that's it for today. Hope you found this helpful. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.